Hi everybody and welcome to The Social Blueprint, interviews with interesting people that we want to know about. And one of the people that I want to know about is my guest, friend, and somebody I've known for many, many years since his bar mitzvah, Justin Fuller. Hey Justin, how are you? I'm great, thanks. And you? Good. And the reason I think Justin is so interesting is because Justin has gotten himself way out of his comfort zone. We always talk about it. But I can't think of anything much more out of your comfort zone than going from your nice house in Caulfield to the Israeli army. And I guess that that's a great place to start, Justin. What takes you from your beautiful house to really uh, putting yourself into one of the most terrifying situations in the world? All right. Thank you for that, Greg, as well. Um, it's definitely a question I've been asked a lot, a challenging question as well, depending on who asks it. Um, but I guess there are three main reasons why I decided, as Greg said, to leave my nice house in Caulfield and go subject myself to 18 months of combat training in in uh, Israel. One is I grew up in a family of Holocaust survivors. My dad's parents were survivors and my mum's grandparents were as well. I grew up with the constant theme that of what could happen to the Jews if we didn't have somebody to to protect us. Right. Um, my dad didn't grow up with uncles and aunts at home. And I think that really, they instilled in me the this, this, this survivors as well, because I was very close to them as well, the importance of the Jewish state. Right. That's number one. N number two is, for 2,000 years, we haven't had a state um, since the destruction of the second temple in 70 CE. Right. And the only reason we're Jewish now is because our grand parents probably prayed three times a day facing towards Jerusalem as well praying for a return right now that I finally have the chance to to just jump on a plane and I can do it myself I thought to myself I would be crazy not to that's incredible and also you know I guess getting into more I know somebody out there or somewhere out there there is a 16 year old boy or girl that's thinking to himself or herself, I am a freak because I want to do the same thing. What would you tell that person? Um, first, and, first and foremost, you're definitely not a freak, um, <laughs> unless I'm a freak, but I'm fine with that. Um, proudly one too. Um, I think it's a very understandable notion as well. Um, if you also think about it, we, we are growing up now in a very vibrant and Zionist community as well. Right. And I think it's it's very unique in the fact that all the factions that that we have interact and unite as one. Um, and I think when you go to when you go to Israel as well, you see that maybe there it doesn't operate as well as we as we do here. So right. I think definitely don't take it for grand to, for grand to as well. Yeah. Yes, and for sure, and as many people know, the diaspora community is very different than when you're in Israel itself. Definitely. And then going into specifically, what did you do in the army? All right. Um, so essentially, I was a combat soldier in the Nachal Brigade, um, the one with, with the green contact, the green berets. Um, I did, for the first eight months of my service, it was split into two tracks of basic training and advanced so essentially we learned how to shoot guns we probably shot thousands and thousands of bullets at the range then grenades navigations and whatnot and then after that it split between tr training and i guess guarding or doing missions and right. whatnot so i was just for an example as well i was based in 2019 when they had the most rockets in a night from Gaza as well. I was based right on the Gaza-Israel border for six months then. Was that during the war? That wasn't during the war. We were actually told, which is actually probably one of the most scary parts of my service as well, but meaningful as well, to pack our bags for war. But thankfully a uh, ceasefire was, was our reached and we didn't uh, have to. Right. And again, you know, the emotional toll was there a lot of what I'd call, and I've seen it on my side because when I went to school with some kids that went to the, into the Gulf War, they described it as a lot of boredom surrounded by sheer terror. 
Well, that's an amazing way to describe it. I haven't actually heard that quote before, but um, I reckon that describes it well. Yeah. Um, she, Tara, I probably, I probably didn't feel as much as them just because, as in I was going, I'm sure they went for a reason as well. I would say Israelis probably feel um, bored and more so than me because I actually chose to. They right. have to go, so they tend to sometimes resent the fact that they would just like to be home with their families. Right. Whilst I'm the same, I made a conscious choice to defend my people and to go. And when it turned to a bit of a scary or boring or whatnot, or when things turned really hard, I was probably in the best situation as well to counter that. Right. That's a really important distinction, I guess, is because doing something out of free will choice versus an obligation is yeah. a massive difference yeah. in mentality. The mental strength definitely helped and, and kicked in then. Right. And then also, I have to ask, you've come back. So you didn't make Aliyah. Was that something you always wanted, knew that you'd come back? Or what was the thought process there? To be honest, there wasn't much of one. Um, That's okay. I, I went because people usually tell me or or ask me at the time, you're crazy for going, how could you? You've got such a comfortable life here. But I, it would have been more crazy for me personally to stay here than, than to go. My, my, my heart was pulling me there and and for me to forego That's great. that yeah. chance was the hard bit. So yeah. Now, and now that you've come back here, do you feel on a, what do you call it, daily or, or any type of basis, those lessons you've learned there, are you able to apply them here? Um, definitely. Um, I think a lot of the time it's subconscious as well. Right. Just in terms of the training, the, the discipline, the motivation, the collaborative skills, teamwork and whatnot. I think I definitely am a different person now for the better as well. I'm, I tend to be more respond more of a leader as well and you definitely see that on a day to day basis as well i can say personally you seem way more confident for sure Thank and you. uh and I, I i don't know if that's directly a result but i have a feeling it is yeah i'm sure it is too and again you know in closing because we want to keep it short do you have any closing remarks for anybody that is considering that it's, it's, again you know especially gearing this towards young people yeah um firstly speak to as many people as you can um don't be shy about it. Don't be scared that you're feeling a certain way. You're always welcome to reach out to me as well. Um, and just your journey is your journey as well. Do what you want to do. Don't do what people expect you to do. Thanks, Justin. I appreciate Cheers. it, buddy. Cheers, Greg. Bye-bye.